Bangalore there. Very good evening and welcome to the news tonight. Your one stop for the day's top stories. Let's start with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses multiple rallies in Gujarat, calls the upcoming assembly election a fight between trust in the idea of development and dynastic politics. Union Minister K.J. Alphonse takes oath as Rajya Sabha member in the presence of Upper House Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu. Alphonse was elected unopposed from Rajasthan earlier this month. In Bali, Mount Agung spews ash. Nearly 60,000 passengers stranded at the country's airport after 450 flights are cancelled and delayed, five alternative airports are ready to divert the inbound flights. And in cricket, India pulls off an infected by an innings and 239 runs over Sri Lanka in their second test in Nagpur, who won up in the three-match series. Let's start with the news from Polebound Gujarat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the BJP's election campaign in the state, addressing four back-to-back -back rallies through the day. Speaking in Gujarati, the Prime Minister sought to strike an emotional chord with the crowds while questioning the opposition Congress on a range of issues. Pushing the BJP's campaign in Gujarat into high gear, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed multiple rallies in the state on Monday. In Bhuj town in Kutch district, the Prime Minister chose to call the upcoming assembly election a fight between trust in the idea of development and dynastic politics. He also answered allegations against him by Congress leaders. The Prime Minister also questioned Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi over his stand on the Doklam issue. He claimed that the opposition party dislikes him because of his poor origins. राजदूत जोड़े गले लगावी ने आ कयु गले लगावानु पराक्रम हतो तमारो कोना लाभार दे तो सवाल तुमने पूछो जो जारे देश ना जवान होए सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक करी in Amreli, Prime Minister Modi said his government is on a mission to give citizens of the country what they should have got 50 years ago. Aapne ko swa desh ne lutwa devo jo yeh, a desh ne lutwa devo jo yeh, je lo ko luti gaya je paachu abu jo ek na abu jo yeh, je garibo no hak le gaya the, ye paachu malvo jo ek na malvo jo yeh. Ane na mathe un ladai ladu jo, gamme tetli taakat ho mari saame aave. Prime 
જેને મળ્યું નથી એ અપાવવાની મેં ઝુંબેશ ઉપાડી છે એના હક્કો અપાવવાની ઝુંબેશ ઉપાડી છે પ્રાઇમ મિનિસ્ટર મોદી એન્ડેડ હિઝ ડે ઓફ રેલીઝ વિથ એન એડ્રેસ ઇન સુરત પોલિંગ ફોર ધ ટુ ફેઝ ઇલેક્શન્સ ઇન ગુજરાત ફોર એઝ મેની એઝ 182 સીટ્સ વિલ ટેક પ્લેસ ઓન ધ 9th એન્ડ 14th ઓફ ડિસેમ્બર વોટ્સ વિલ બી કાઉન્ટેડ ઓન ધ 18th ઓફ ડિસેમ્બર બ્યુરો રિપોર્ટ રાજ્યસભા ટીવી Meanwhile, the Congress on Monday released its final list of 14 candidates on the last day of filing of nominations for the second phase of the Assembly polls. It had released its third list of 76 candidates late on Sunday night. However, the list has left many ticket hopefuls and their supporters angry. Several incidents of vandalism at Congress offices have been reported from the state. In the fourth and final list of candidates, the party has released 14 new names. The party has also kept two seats for the Bharatiya Tribal Party, headed by former JDU MLA Chotubhai Vasava after they formed an alliance 89 seats of Saurashtra and South Gujarat region are going to polls in the first phase on the 9th of December while the remaining 93 seats in central and northern region would go for polls in the second phase on the 14th of December Union Minister KJ Alphonse took oath as a Rajya Sabha member today in the presence of Upper House Chairman M Venkaiah Naidu, Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman PJ Kurian and Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Vijay Goel were also present on the occasion. Earlier in a by poll this month Alphonse was elected unopposed to Rajya Sabha from Rajasthan. KJ Alphonse is a 1979 batch IAS officer. He began his political journey by becoming an independent MLA backed by the CPIM in Kerala in 2006. He joined the BJP in 2011. Our correspondent Ravindra Sharan met KJ Alphonse right after the oath ceremony. Let's listen in. We have now been joined by the Minister of State for Tourism and uh, Electro, uh, Telecommunication Electronics, Mr. KJ Alphonse. He has just taken the oath as member of the Rajya Sabha. Sir, what will be your priorities? Congratulations to you as a... Thank you very much. I am so deeply honored to be a member of this uh, August House. it uh, brings in so much responsibility to be the voice of the voiceless of the deprived the downtrodden and really uh, bring dignity to their lives and i will use this forum to do exactly that and um, i am i'll um, try to bring the voice of the people of the citizen to the house and of course as a minister it would also be my job to be part of the prime minister's dream to do things and execute things and make sure that this dream gets realized and reaches the last man out there the last woman out there sir you are entering into the elder house of the elders the council of state rajya sabha is called as what will be your priority what do you think that you have closely watched the proceedings of the house what do you think the new changes you will bring in well i am a fresh member in the house so i really uh, i don't have parliamentary experience i was member of the assembly only earlier so my first job is to learn how uh, things happen and uh, then eventually to of course to be a responsible member of the parliament and to be a responsible minister who will be accountable to the parliament you have been a bureaucrat for a long time sir now the, the main responsibility of a bureaucrat is to execute the laws which has been made here now you are here to make the laws for the country uh, how you find yourself comfortable in the new role sir uh, i think that's very interesting moving from execution to make to making the law that's a big big step and it puts such constitutional responsibility on me and um, and um, i pray that uh, pray to god to give me the wisdom to be able to to live up to my to the expectations of people and the constitution of india Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank All you. the best sir. Best. Yeah. In more national news, the Supreme Court is likely to set up a constitution bench next week to hear the issue of stay against mandatory linking of Aadhaar with bank accounts, mobile phone numbers, etc. The matter was mentioned before a bench headed by Chief Justice Deepak Mishra who said that the court would take it up in a week to come. On the 30th of October, the Apex Court referred all Aadhaar cases to a five-judge constitution bench to be formed by the end of November. till such time the government can continue to use aadhar for its various programs meanwhile the center has agreed to extend the deadline for mandatory linking of aadhar 
to the 31st of uh, March next year. Currently, the last date to link Aadhaar with your PAN and bank accounts is 31st of December, while for mobile numbers, it is February 6, 2018. Now, the petitioners challenging the Aadhaar scheme have been pressing for an interim stay order on the government's decision, but the bench also comprising Justices A.M. Khanvilkar and D.Y. Chandrachur said that only the constitution bench will pass an interim order in the matter. Staying with the Supreme Court on Monday, it interacted with a Kerala woman, Hadia, in the alleged love jihad case, after which the Apex Court has sent her to Salem in Tamil Nadu to pursue her studies. The Apex Court has asked the Kerala police to provide Hadia with security and ensure that she travels to Salem at the earliest. In the interaction with the court, Hadia said that she wanted to go with her husband, Shafi Jahan. The court has now heard, in fact, now fixed the hearing on Shafi Jahan's plea against the Kerala High Court order, annulling their marriage to the third week of January. The Supreme Court also directed the college and university concerned to re-admit Hadia and grant her hostel, hostel facilities. In, it, in fact, appointed the dean of the Salem-based homeopathic college as Hadia's guardian and granted him liberty to approach it in case of any problem. And, uh, you know, we are happy that she has been permitted to continue her studies. And, uh, and her, her, her marriage, which has been set aside by the High Court, has, has not been stayed at all. So the, there is no marriage as of now. She will continue with her studies. We are happy with that. Sir, sir, but sir. she has talked about the freedom. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she has the freedom to continue her studies. I mean, I am preparing for the father. We are happy that she has been sent to the hostel for completion of her studies. Vice President M. Venka and Naidu interacted with officer trainees of Indian Telecom Services in New Delhi on Monday. Telecom Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad was also present there. During the interaction, the vice president, um, the young telecom, met in fact the young telecom officials and told them to come out of the with the out of the box ideas, saying that one was must work on those technologies that can benefit the society as a whole. Home Minister Rajnath Singh, who is on a three-day visit to Russia, met his Russian counterpart Vladimir Kolokotsev on Monday. Both the leaders held wide-ranging talks in Moscow. They asserted that they are no good or bad terrorists and the menace of terrorism should be fought jointly. An agreement on combating terrorism was also signed between the two strategic partners. In a tweet, Home Minister Rajnath Singh said that the new agreement between India and Russia will replace the October 1993 agreement and will help expand and deepen cooperation on issues related to internal security. Leaders of both the countries also agreed to cooperate in combating new challenges, enhance exchange of information, cooperate in building a database and in training of police and investigative agencies. And here's a look at what else made news across the country in Nationwide. The Supreme Court has refused to entertain the petition filed by a woman named Amrita claiming to be the daughter of former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jaya Lalitha. A bench of justices also refused to allow the plea of the woman to conduct a DNA test for the purpose of proving her parentage. The Supreme Court has permitted the centre to withdraw four of the eight companies of Central Armed Paramilitary Forces from politically sensitive Darjeeling and Kalimpong districts of West Bengal for deployment in polebound Gujarat. A bench today agreed to the centre's plea to relocate half of the remaining paramilitary forces to the polebound state. The Income Tax Department has charged the Aam Aadmi Party with taking hawala entries worth 2 crore rupees from a Delhi-based operative and revoke the tax exemption given to it as a political party for assessment year 2015-16. The department alleged that Kejriwal-led party in power in Delhi incorrectly disclosed, disclosed the hawala money as voluntary donations. Floral tributes were paid at the statue of former Lok Sabha Speaker G.V. Mavlankar, whose birth anniversary was observed in the Central Hall of Parliament House today. 
Several members of Rajya Sabha, including Deputy Chairman P.J. Kurian, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Vijay Goel, and BJP leader L.K. Advani were among those who paid tributes. A Central Reserve Police Force Jawan was killed and two of his colleagues injured after Naxalites opened fire on a joint team of the Maharashtra Police and Paramilitary Forces in Gachiroli District. CRPF Deputy Inspector General M. Dinakaran said that the attack took place in Padial Metta Forest near Gyarapati Police Station limits. A quick break here. Up next, we'll get you the top international stories. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. one of the oldest and most unique percussion instruments of southern India. You can play it not only with your fingers, but palms, wrists and heels as well. You'll be surprised, but the air inside the ghatam reverberates, creating the musical notes. Five elements of nature, earth, water, air, fire and space make up the composition of this beautiful musical piece, which has found an apt place in most of the ancient books. Welcome back. Let's give you the top international story coming in from Indonesia, which has raised its warning for Bali's Mount Agung volcano to the top level for alert. In fact, the ash spewing volcano has forced the closure of the island's airport, with residents near the summit being asked to immediately evacuate. Authorities warn that there is an imminent risk of a larger eruption. Nearly 60,000 passengers stranded at Bali's airport after it was closed for 24 hours some 450 flights have been cancelled or delayed as Mount Agung continues to spew ash. Five alternative airports have been prepared for airlines to divert inbound flights. I'm a little bit frustrated because um, I checked the internet 15 minutes ago, everything was scheduled and um, now I'm standing here and everything is closed. So I got the information very late. We have got no information because the gates to the park to check in has been, has been closed indefinitely, so we don't know what's the plan. So most likely we have to stay overnight. We had planned to go back to Adelaide in South Australia uh, this evening. We actually got here quite early, but now we've found that uh, the flights have been cancelled. Now, we weren't notified by Jetstar in advance of us getting here, so we're very disappointed about that. TV footage shows cold lava or leher flowing at a number of locations on the mountainside. The coal lava carrying mud and large boulders can destroy houses, bridges and roads in its path. Plumes of smoke can be seen billowing out of the volcano with sound of weak blasts being heard up to 12 kilometers. Tadi pagi, Kepala BVMBG menetapkan status Gunung Agung status awas level 4. Artinya level tertinggi dari Gunung Agung. Dan kemungkinan akan terjadinya letusan-letusan yang lebih besar daripada sebelumnya sangat tinggi. Apalagi masih beberapa indikasi menunjukkan memang akan terjadi letusan. Bahkan letusan sejak kemarin sudah disertai dengan letusan-letusan yang eksplosif. Residents living near the summit have been asked to immediately evacuate the danger zone which circles Agung in a radius of 8 to 10 kilometers. Yang jelas tadi ada laporan beberapa banjar sudah di saudara-saudara kita dari Karangasem sudah memasuki beberapa banjar pos-pos uh, kemarin itu sudah kembali lagi. Cuma jumlahnya belum kita dapatkan secara pasti. Seperti di Tojan sudah masuk, di Gegel juga sudah mulai masuk, pengungsi di Gakah juga sudah mulai masuk seperti itu. 
Agung's last eruption in 1963 left more than a thousand people dead and razed several villages. Bali is a major tourist attraction with nearly 5 million people visiting last year. Business has been affected since September when the volcanic tremors began to rise. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Pakistan's law minister Zahid Hamid resigned on Monday, giving in to demands by protesters who blocked a major highway into Islamabad for weeks. Interior Minister Ehsan Iqbal told the Islamabad High Court on Monday that an agreement has been signed, which brought an end to the three-week-long protests in Islamabad and other cities. The agreement would also see all protesters who were arrested during the course of the sit-in, which began on the 8th of November, be released within three days. The hardline protesters wanted the law minister to resign for allegedly modifying the oath of office taken by politicians. They said that the change amounted to blasphemy. The modification was called a clerical error and immediately removed, but that did not satisfy Muslim fundamentalists in the country. An inquiry will now be ordered into a government security crackdown on Saturday, which saw thousands of riot police fire tear gas, rubber bullets and water cannon in an attempt to disperse thousands of protesters. At least five people were killed and more than 200, mostly members of the security forces, were wounded in those clashes. And here are more updates from across the world in Global Buzz. Pope Francis arrived in Yangon today, the start of a delicate four-day visit for the world's most prominent Christian to majority Buddhist Myanmar. The Pope will also visit Bangladesh, where over 620,000 Rohingyas have fled to escape what Amnesty International has dubbed as crimes against humanity by the Myanmar security forces. In Honduras, presidential candidate and television host Salvador Nasrallah claimed that early numbers have given his opposition alliance a strong lead. But Nasrallah, who told his supporters that they were winning, also floated the possibility that the results could be less favourable for them. A powerful blast in the port city of Ningbo in China's East Zhejiang province killed two people and injured over 30 others. It was the country's worst industrial explosion in three years. The blast destroyed nearby buildings and vehicles. Many residential communities reported shattered windows up to a kilometer from the explosion site. For right, let's change tracks. Get you some cricket news. And India pulled off a stunning victory against Sri Lanka in the second test in Nagpur, taking a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. The host pulled off an innings and 239-run win. The hapless Sri Lankans in a remarkably one-sided match a surprising development after the events in Kolkata. The victory margin is identical to India's test win over Bangladesh at Nirpur in 2007 when Rahul, Gandhi, Rahul Dravid was captain. The Nagpur test witnessed Virat Kohli slamming his fifth test double ton and R. Ashwin becoming the fastest to 300 test wickets among other milestones. The third and final test will take place at the Firosha Kotla in New Delhi starting the 2nd of December. Meanwhile, skipper Kohli has been rested for the ODI series against Sri Lanka starting the 10th of December. The 15-member squad will be led by Rohit Sharma then. More cricket and other sports updates now in Sportsbeat. Australia cruised to a crushing 10-wicket win over England to go one-up in the Ashes 2017 series in the opening test. Openers David Warner and Cameron Bancroft added to England's agony by racing to the required runs without the loss of a wicket before lunch on the final day. In the process, the duo also broke an 87-year-old test record for the all-time highest unbeaten opening partnership in a successful test chase. The five-test series will now head to Adelaide Oval for the first ever Ashes day-night test starting Saturday. Jordi Alba's late equaliser maintained Barcelona's four-point lead over Valencia at the top of La Liga in a one-all draw on Sunday. 
This amid a controversy over the league's lack of goal line technology that raged way after the match ended. Lionel Messi's first half kick had crossed the line but wasn't allowed to stand as unlike other major European leagues, La Liga has refused to introduce the technology on cost grounds. AC Milan sacked coach Vincenzo Montella on Monday and immediately announced that he would be replaced by former midfielder Gennaro Gattuso. Montella was dismissed one day after a goalless home draw with Torino and that left Milan seventh in Serie A with 20 points from 14 games. 39-year-old Gattuso was known as one of Italy's toughest defensive midfielders in his playing days. He began coaching with Swiss club Sion in 2013. That's it on the news tonight. Thank you for joining us.